Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's talk about boxing for a moment and let me open by apologizing to super bantamweight contender Carl Frampton. Right? Let me just say in analyzing a past Frampton fight I made the claim that Kinko Martinez, arguably Frampton's biggest win to date, was a fighter who was past his prime. I've been proven wrong. Kinko Martinez has gone on a tear since fighting Carl Frampton. It's a tear that deserves your recognition. He just beat Hazumi Hasegawa, right? The Frampton victory, in hindsight, looks even bigger and deserves more praise than it did at the time. Now, many people believe that Frampton is the future at Super Bantamweight. Certainly, I have my eye on Frampton, and I will continue to watch him. Let me apologize to Frampton right now for downplaying his victory over Kiko Martinez. I never want to be too proud to reassess. Okay, let's talk a little bit further. Boxing, unlike a lot of sports, unlike domestic sports leagues, is international. It's impacted by global events, right? A lot is happening around the world. But the mayoral race in Kiev, in the Ukraine, will have a major impact on the sport of boxing. Right now, they're counting the votes. According to exit polling, the next mayor of Kiev will be heavyweight champion Vitaly Klitschko. Now, Vitaly Klitschko, who said he might not get back in the ring again, started talking about the possibility of fighting new heavyweight champion Bermain Stavern. In my opinion, that's not going to happen if, as expected, he wins this mayoral race, right? Right now, he has more than 56% of the votes, right? As I said, the exit polling has projected him to be the winner. Keep a close eye on that race. Understand that if he wins it, Vitaly Klitschko, in my opinion, the best heavyweight of the post-Lennox Lewis era, will no longer be a boxer, right? He'll participate in the sport through K2 Promotions, which he co-owns with his brother as a promoter, but his career as a fighter would come to an end. That will shake things up at heavyweight. Okay, let's talk about some other things. In the 1960s, Boxing mythology has it, and boxing mythology is fact mixed with folklore, right? You know how these things are. They're always bigger in the rearview mirror, right? But boxing mythology has it that Muhammad Ali, one of history's best heavyweights, would predict rounds in which he would knock out an opponent, right? Now, that's factual. The folklore has it that Ali would then carry fighters for rounds so that his prediction could come true. So against Zora Fali, many ringside observers felt that Ali could have knocked out Fali earlier. But because <laughs> Ali picked a middle round as his prediction, in which the fight would end. They claim that Ali carried Fali for several rounds just so his prediction could come true. By the way, Ali, of course, knocked out Zura Fali. Well, we have an updated version 
of Muhammad Ali's predictions, and it comes from George Groves. Right, as you know, George Groves, in what I consider to be the biggest fight of the year, will be taking on Carl Frotch this weekend in front of more than 80,000 fans at Wembley Stadium. According to recent reports on that fight, understand that George Groves is not telling us the round, although he has mentioned the third round in some interviews, but now he's gone even farther. Right? He's talking about the punch he's going to use to KO Carl Frotch. George Groves wants everyone to believe that he's going to knock Frotch out with a left hook. We'll see if it happens. I'm curious to see, first of all, how Groves thinks he can knock out a guy who has never been knocked out in his career. Understand, too, Carl Frotch has been knocked down in fights, notably the first fight against Groves. He was knocked down against Jermaine Taylor. And Frotch is the kind of guy who can get off the canvas, hop back in the saddle, be dazed and confused, and go on to win the fight. So consider me a skeptic of Groves' left hook argument. Better strategist than me might even speculate that Groves is talking about a left hook to set up a different punch when the fight actually happens. Now let's talk about what's at stake in the fight. Understand the major players are not just in the ring. Many of them will be outside of the ring. Now let me say this. Here in the United States, we have a tendency especially in a country that talks about American exceptionalism, right? That's a phrase being bandied about these days by President Barack Obama. We have a tendency to overlook what's happening in the rest of the world. No doubt many American fight fans believe that the only promoters in the sport are Bob Arum's top rank, right? And I'll agree, top rank has a well-deserved big reputation in the world of boxing promotion, right? Bob Arum is a guy who's been promoting the biggest fights since the 1970s, right? You have top rank, and of course you have Golden Boy Promotions, right? Simply put, Oscar De La Hoya, when he was a fighter, was one of the biggest grossing fighters in boxing history. Understand, when he fought Floyd Mayweather, Oscar De La Hoya was the A-side for that promotion. Right? That Oscar De La Hoya Mayweather fight remains the high watermark in terms of the number of pay-per-view customers in the sport's history. Right? His organization... Golden Boy, of course, is the group with which Floyd Mayweather works right now. Mayweather has his own promotional outfit, Mayweather Promotions, but he associates himself with Golden Boy to help promote his fights, right? Golden Boy is a giant in the industry, but what people need to realize is that there are other giants in the industry. There are other promoters who, quite frankly, have been putting on huge shows in a fight that will have financial ramifications for a long time. Vladimir Klitschko fought Alexander Povetkin in Moscow, and the promoter there was Vladimir Hayanov. Right? Just to understand, had Povetkin won that fight, the heavyweight division would have had to have traveled to and gone through Moscow to get the title. As it is, Povetkin's next fight is in Moscow against Manuel Char. As it is, Vladimir Klitschko won that fight, right? Vladimir Klitschko's next fight is not in Moscow. It's in Germany, right? And his promotional outfit, K2 Promotions, remains one of the biggest players in the heavyweight division. Well, understand, for this Frotch-Gross fight, 
you have another player who after this fight is going to be one of the biggest promoters in the sport you need to keep an eye on him He's not just Carl Frotch's promoter. He's James DeGale's promoter. He is Eddie Hearn. If you don't know the name, you need to write it down. Understand, if Carl Frotch wins this fight in front of not 20,000, not your typical Las Vegas fight, but 80,000 people in Wembley, understand the next fight against the winner of James DeGale who also has Eddie Hearn as his promoter and Brandon Gonzalez let me introduce another big player at 168 pounds in fact let me introduce two big players at 168 pounds the first is Brandon Gonzalez's manager right I know him Right, soft-spoken, a guy who likes to stay in the shadows. But he has huge influence in the sport of boxing. Brandon Gonzalez's manager is also the manager of a fighter you may have heard of. Andre Ward. Right, Ward is widely regarded as the second best fighter pound for pound in the sport. Let me just say, Andre is much younger than Floyd Mayweather. Much younger. Right? I know we call him the second best in the sport pound for pound. I'll, I'll just say this. I consider Andre to be in his prime. I consider Mayweather to be a little bit past his prime. Right? Calling Andre the second best in the sport pound for pound, while respectful to Floyd Mayweather, might not be true. If we're talking about who's the best in the sport pound for pound in his prime, an argument can be made that that person is Andre Ward. Well, understand, if Brandon Gonzalez, who's managed by James Prince, remember the name, he's Andre Ward's manager. If Brandon Gonzalez beats James DeGale, James Prince will be very, very powerful at 168 pounds. Understand what that means is that James Prince, who's much more lower profile than Al Heyman, who you hear about a lot more, right? If Gonzalez beats DeGale, James Prince will not only manage one of the champions at 168 in Andre Ward, but James Prince would also manage the mandatory contender for one of the other belts in the division. Right? Pay close attention to that fight that the Gale Gonzalez fight, in my opinion, will be fought at a higher level than the Frotch Groves fight. Right? Understand, both DeGale and Gonzalez are underrated. DeGale's only loss is a curious one to George Groves, right? Razor thin. Many of the UK's papers had DeGale winning that fight. I thought DeGale won the fight. Understand Brandon Gonzalez, when you look at that Thomas Utheisen fight, you have to wonder which fight the judges were watching. Understand that fight was officially scored a draw. It's clear that Gonzalez dominates the first half of that fight. The second person, other than Prince, who stands to gain tremendously from the Gonzalez de Gale fight, is Virgil Hunter. Now, Virgil Hunter is rapidly becoming one of the biggest trainers in the sport. 
Understand he's already won a Trainer of the Year award. Right? Understand. People in need of reviving their careers, like Abner Maris, who just lost to Johnny Gonzalez, have now turned to Virgil Hunter to resurrect their careers. Amir Khan has joined Virgil Hunter. Didn't Khan look good to you? in his last fight against Luis Colazzo. Let me just say, Floyd Mayweather at this point may be unable to avoid fighting Khan because Khan looks good, people see the hand speed, people see the movement, Khan's in his prime, he's in his late 20s. There does come a time when the fans will demand that even an elite emeritus fighter take on a guy in his own division. Isn't that what happened here with Frotch and George Groves? Didn't Carl Frotch after the first fight say, I'm never fighting Groves again? Right? Didn't the fans then say, you got to be kidding me. Did you win that first fight? Wasn't there an outcry? Didn't Carl Frotch eventually understand that in his own country there were people questioning whether he was the best at his weight? Well, let me just say this. Virgil Hunter is the trainer of Andre Ward. Understand you have a situation where Virgil Hunter already has a champion at 168 and might end up having the mandatory challenger at 168. Right? Pay close attention to what's happening there. Fighters are flocking to Virgil Hunter as it is. Right? So, let me just say this too. Right now, and it's not reported enough, one of the biggest hotbeds for boxing is Canada. Right? As I said earlier, boxing's international. One of the best venues in the sport is the Bell Center. Right? If any group of people know who Carl Frotch is, it's the Canadians. Understand, Carl Frotch was the guy who beat Jean Pascal when Jean Pascal was unbeaten. You only lose your cherry once. Understand, Carl Frotch was the guy who, as an underdog, derailed. Canadian hero Lucien Boutte. Right now, understand if Carl Frotch wins this fight, in addition to the huge fight he would have in fighting the winner of DeGale Gonzalez. And understand if James DeGale wins that fight, you would have the spectacle should Frotch beat Groves. Right, you would have the spectacle of Carl Frotch, proven champion, versus a British Olympic gold medalist, James DeGale, MBE. If you're from the UK, you know what I'm talking about. Right, for the title at 168 pounds. But understand, in addition to that fight, Carl Frotch could travel. To Canada if he wanted to and would have lucrative fights if he turned left or right. There's the rematch against Jean Pascal. Understand, Pascal looked great against Lucien Boutte, right? Pascal is still in the mix at 175 pounds. There's the rematch against Lucien Boutte who needs to revive his career. That fight would be a sellout. And then, of course, 
there would be a possible fight against the champion at 175 pounds, Adonis Stevenson, who, quite frankly, needs a credible opponent in his next fight after his performance against Andres Fonfara. Right? Understand, too, as Frotch continues to blow up in boxing, so too would his promotional group, Eddie Hearn, who I mentioned earlier. But understand there are other people, too. George Groves has recently signed with German promoter Team Saarland. Understand a Groves victory in front of 80,000 people at Wembley could lead to a World War II type German invasion of the United Kingdom. Understand then Team Sarlin would have the 168 pound title. Then they could promote what George Groves does down the road against perhaps James DeGale, perhaps a Karl Frotch rematch. Right? Understand then Germany, one of the big players in boxing. Right? The country where David Hay had to travel to to get the heavyweight title from Value F. Right? Germany's influence in the world of boxing would grow with the George Groves victory. Right? So think about all the possible outcomes. Just understand a lot is riding on this card that's taking place this weekend in the United Kingdom. Right? The balance of power both at 168 in the ring and outside of the ring will be impacted. Understand too, there's more going on behind the scenes. One of the biggest draws in any division in the sport of boxing is Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Right? The numbers speak for themselves. Chavez Jr. is a cash cow in the sport. Understand these days he's fighting at 168 pounds. Understand right now he has some differences of opinion with his promoter top rank right you need to consider that as you watch this because understand he also wants the title at 168 pounds top rank contends that they have Chavez Jr. under contract through next year that situation could resolve itself contractually or in court litigiously right so a lot is going on obviously top rank wants to get in at 168 pounds given all that's happening in the division understand too Chavez Jr. was in discussions to fight one of boxing's emerging superstars Olympic silver medalist Janady Golovkin the unbeaten champion at middleweight. Right? Golovkin's already interested in jumping to 168 pounds. If he were willing to fight Chavez Jr., don't you think he'd be willing to fight Frotch, Groves, DeGale, or Gonzalez? Let's think it through. This fight this weekend is going to have major repercussions in the sport of boxing. Let me know what you think. Who's going to be the big winner this weekend, both in the ring and out of the ring? Right? I hope you leave your thoughts for all of us here in the comment section to this video. And for those who don't know, I'm expecting George Groves to win the fight, right? 
I personally believe that Groves has more talent than Carl Frotch. My concern with Groves is his ego. I think it might be unchecked, right? And so I'll just say this. I'm expecting Groves to win the fight, perhaps not by left hook. I'm hoping he uses his legs, uses the advantages that God has given him, and outboxes Carl Frotch, who has never been knocked out in a fight. I think going for the knockout is foolhardy. But we'll see how Groves decides to go about it. I would hedge the play, and you can do it because you're getting better than even money on both halves of the play. I would hedge the play with Carl Frotch by KO. Let me just say this, though. Of the four guys fighting at 168 on this card, I think the best is James DeGale. I'm expecting DeGale to win his fight. And then I'm expecting DeGale to go on to do bigger and better things. Let's see what happens. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.